Okay, let's start by drawing a square composed of four points. There are, of course, many different ways to modify this shape, but one common way is with linear transformations. Here, we use each vertex as a vector and apply a transformation matrix to it via matrix multiplication. Now, affine transformations take this one step further by also allowing for us to translate the shape with an additional xy offset vector. Of course, there are many different affine transformations allowed here, including shearing, scaling, and rotation, all of which we'll talk about. For now though, it kind of feels like all of these transformations just magically fall out of the matrix multiplication, which is not particularly intuitive. For that reason, I usually see each individual element in the matrix as some sort of dial that we can manipulate. So we might start with the identity matrix without any xy offset, and then push on the dial corresponding to the upper left hand element. Here we see that it corresponds to a scaling along x. Similarly, the bottom right hand element scales along y, the upper right hand dial corresponds to shearing along x, and the lower left dial corresponds to shearing along y. The last two dials correspond to translation along x and y. So now let's think about what we might need to perform a more complicated operation, like rotation for example. Well, we could first shear in one direction before shearing the opposite way, which would create a rotational-like effect. But the square would end up being just a little bit too large in this case, so we'd also need to scale things back just a little bit. From this, we can probably figure out that the rotation matrix should be some combination of scaling and shearing that is related to movement along a circle. Now we just need to find the right matrix or method of moving our dials around. Here, the rotation matrix is a set of sines and cosines that looks something like this. Note that the negative sign on the upper right hand sign corresponds to the fact that we need to shear in two opposing directions, which we kind of showed before. Now, there's a little more information on the algorithm archive, but I'll leave it at this for now and state that this matrix is, in fact, the rotation matrix. I'm considering making another video on the topic if there's demand, but for now I want to move on to a more interesting topic, how affine transformations are typically implemented in practice with a larger augmented matrix. In this case, it's common to combine the linear and translation terms into a large 3x3 matrix and apply that to your input vector. But wait, I hear you say. That doesn't make any sense. Our input vector is 2 by 1. How could we possibly apply a 3 by 3 matrix to it? That's not how matrix multiplication works. A and yeah, you're totally right. For this reason, people just assume that we're working on a plane at z equals 1 by appending a 1 to the end of the input and translation vectors. This effectively transforms our square into a plane that is resting at z equals 1, but it's sometimes more informative to think about this as the top slab of a larger cube. It's kind of hacky, but it works. All the normal linear operations work just fine. We can scale along x, shear along y, so on and so forth. There is something weird about translation, though. In this case, translation is actually another shear along the entire cube, and it only appears to be translation because we are hyper-focused on the top slab at z equals 1. Again, a bit hacky, but it works. Okay, that's all cool, but there's still one lingering question. What about those three extra dials corresponding to the last row in the new 3x3 matrix? Ah, those? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. They are shears and scales along z, but again, we don't care about them, because we are hyper-focused on the slab at z equals 1. From that perspective, none of these operations change our square's overall shape, just the cube. When all of this is put together, I really feel like the augmented matrix implementation knocks at the door of a stronger concept. Namely, that affine transformations are just a subset of all possible linear operations in n plus 1 dimensions. Now, as always, there is a huge amount to talk about with any mathematical concept, so my goal with this video was just to provide quick intuition. There's more available in the algorithm archive and in various other sources on the topic, and I definitely encourage you to check them out if you want to. Anyway, that's all for now. If you like this content and want to see it continue in the future, please consider supporting me on either GitHub sponsors or Patreon. I know I've been kind of light on the uploads recently, but I've got a lot of really cool plans for the rest of 2021 that I think you're really going to like. That said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.